can hear me. How are you guys this morning? Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How is everyone this today, this morning for me, but anywhere in the world? I am so happy to be back and I just always wonder about the stash that we have in our craft room. We have so many things in our craft room. We just like, you know, it just sits there. I'm sure we're all guilty of this. One of the things that I'm most guilty of is tissue and not to, I mean, washi tape because I forget about it. I truly forget about it because whenever I think uh, washi tape, I think uh, craft, paper crafts, scrapbooking, or, um, you know, like card making. And I feel like uh, it, tissue paper, not, oh, I keep on calling it tissue paper. Washi tape is um, just something that is such a staple in some of our craft rooms. And we just sit there and don't use it. And this is a really cool washi tape. I think this is finna but any washi tape that you have at home would work. And what I want to um, show you is how to use it for mixed media. So that's basically like the main thing. And how to build layers with this, because this is great to build layers with. So what I do is I like kind of taking the washi tape. I mean, there's some really cool designs here, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just kind of tear a piece of paper, a piece of the, the washi tape, and you could glue it fully, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tear it. So because this will just give an extra layer to my art journal. Now, the art journal I'm working with is a small art journal. I think it's a three and a half by five, if I'm not mistaken. The links are all in the description so you can see. And why I like this art journal is because it's a very small art journal. And the good thing about it is that it's doable. I've been having a really hard time creating lately. And having a small art journal that just basically things are doable with it that you don't have to, you know, create a big, if you have, you don't have a big surface to create on is a great thing. And this one, as you can see, I just recently created this art journal page for my members and a lot of the liquid seeped through. So my journal is really loose. Okay. Because it got wet through the other page. So using things like washi tape or even tissue paper is really good because what it does is it can actually help you bond this area where it got wet. Oh, I, and everybody's saying how many tissue, how many rolls of, um, of um, washi tape they have. That's great. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Keep on telling me how many, how many rolls you have. That's awesome. Um, so if you can see why I like also another reason why I like these small art journals, I can actually put them side by side to kind of show you what I'm going for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this composition when it kind of drips down in this direction. Okay. So there's going to be a white space in this area. So I'm going to start here. And I have two of these books, so I can actually go on the other side and do the same thing. So I'm going to kind of go in this direction as well. But even if the washi tape ends up with straight edges, that is okay. You can just um, you can just go ahead. You you will see how I'm going to cover that. That's what I meant to say. So again, I'm going to rip this, and I am going to use this to bind my my to, to enforce the seams of my art journal now i'm going to put this one here as you can see it's really loose so this works out well any washi tape works and if you want to do other colors if you don't want to do black for example feel free to just do other colors it doesn't have to be black per se oh i really like this butterfly i want to be able to have it in this direction so, so you can maybe see it, although I think the ones I had here kind of got hidden. I also have this alphabet washi tape, which I think is really cool. It's really old. I might have gotten it like, I think, I don't even know where it's from, Joanne's or something like that. I, they used to come in like bins at Michael's and or Joanne's or any of those. And we I used to just grab a bunch of them that I liked, not realizing they'll just hoard forever. And yeah, 
that's what it used to, that's what used to happen right i'm sure we're all guilty of that of just hoarding craft supplies and if you see that the washi tape is not sticking really well don't worry is that can be fixed don't want to cover my butterfly and i will show you soon how to fix that okay so i'm just kind of building the composition with the washi tape and going back and forth trying to um first of all seal the middle as i said i really want to enforce the middle even if you put a few layers in the middle it will help enforce it especially if you have so much um especially if you have so much in the so much leftover you know like okay sorry if i meant to say especially if you really ruined it from another design oh i need to put some i like this face a lot so i am going to do that so basically i'm just creating this type of composition any type of composition will work you don't specifically need to do it this way but I like this cascading kind of composition because it kind of looks like a, a distress wall or some kind of like um, painted wall, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. And you think you don't see it, but everything kind of goes together. Um, so let me just put some more here. Well, maybe I'll do it this way because I like that butterfly. And I think we're almost done. Yeah, I might put a little bit of this. Now you can do the same thing with like things like book pages or tissue paper. It's basically like the, the possibilities are endless. So there we go. Okay, so now we kind of have this composition going on. Now, as I said, um, some of the tissue paper is probably not gluing as great. I mean, tissue paper, it's known for not having the greatest, like it's not supposed to stick so well. It's supposed to kind of be used for things like, um, like, you know, to put on cards and stuff like that. And over time, I think the glue kind of goes away <laughs> and that's okay because um, we can use things like gel medium to kind of reinforce it, okay? So I love using uh this which is the matte medium especially for things that are thin like tissue paper or washi tape or book pages and i basically just go like this and it's clogged ha. should have checked that before yeah okay there we go that's why we have other tools in our craft room to help us and what i do is i, I always keep one paintbrush, I always say this, I keep one paintbrush that I use only for like the gel mediums to kind of collage. And I know this is maybe not the greatest thing to do, but I keep my paintbrushes in water. This, sorry, not my paintbrushes, some of them I do, but this paintbrush in water. It's not an expensive paintbrush. I kind of use like a cheap kind of dollar store paintbrush or something that you know I don't need as much but keeping it in water keeps it moist so that way I can always use the same one for gel medium I think it's important and um uh yeah um and yes yeah, so anyways a uh, there we go now I'm gonna answer a question Lina si es como un barniz es un gel Para sellar, para sellar todos los papeles. Just answering in Spanish a question. She was asking if this is like a, um, what is that called? Like something to seal the page. And that's what I said that it is. Now, of course, it's really important to dry this step. And now I have all my tissue paper. Gosh, I keep on calling it tissue paper. All my washi tape. Very, uh sealed onto the background. Oh, good. So everybody seems like they have a lot of washi tape. So that's really, really good. Yeah, I'm just going to say hello to everyone. Hi, Karen. Hi, Ingrid. Swamper60. Hola, Lina. Tiffany. I saw a lot of people. Elaine. Like, I saw lots of people there. Um, should go back up and see 
John, Rebecca, Mickey, Marcy, <laughs> she's going up. Marta, who else? Ruth, if I missed anybody, please forgive me. Oh, I saw in Puerto Rico, some people from Puerto Rico, awesome. Yeah, please um, use some of your stash. Use your washi tape. It's so good to use it. Use your tissue paper. I'm sure you have hordes of that as well. Okay. So the next step is to add gesso. And there is two ways of adding gesso. I recently did a video where I showed like all the uses of gesso, how good your yeah, gesso can be for so many different uses. And one of them for me in this case is to use it not only as texture, but also as a cover-up. So, sorry, I'm a right-handed, so I have to turn this around. So what I want is I want to kind of add this really roughly with a palette knife. And as you get down, you can actually create some really cool texture. So I'm adding, I'm adding it heavily on this area, okay? And as I'm going down, it's becoming less heavy and that creates those really cool painted like effects that I that um, that you see in my other page okay so it kind of looks like a painted wall which is what I said before and at the same time I'm getting great texture here and I'm getting great texture here and what the gesso does not only does it give you that great texture and you can remove if let's say you don't like part of it you can remove you can even use a wipe. So for example, I think I put too much here and you can just remove some of it, okay? Uh, but not only does it give you great texture, but what you can do with it is actually kind of cover the straight edges. So cover the edges so you don't have any harsh lines. So that's something that I love doing. And now I'm going to go in the other side and do the same thing. So just making sure I'm in, on camera. And... I just kind of grab here, put the thicker area towards the white space, because I call this the white space of my composition. And as, as I'm going up, it's going to create that really cool texture. And I love that because it really, you see, it just in one swipe, you get basically everything done. And look how good it looks, in my opinion, okay? <laughs> I guess everything is in my opinion. I can't say, well, it looks good because it looks good, but I just like that. And that's it. That's how simple it is. I just grab a palette knife, plastic or metal, and just roughly apply it. You can smooth it out if with like a paintbrush or with your fingers. So if you want to like hide any areas that you don't like, or if there's any harsh lines that you don't like, you can go ahead and cover them as well. Um, yeah, thanks for so much, Elaine. So the other one that I showed before, it's a Patreon, it was a Patreon uh, class that I did on Friday. Elaine was there, Graciela was there. And, um, and that's good because like you can learn like, like piece by piece, I really give a lot of um, a lot of different um, you know like tips that I cannot sometimes give in my regular like videos or even now like I I I am more always feel more rushed when I'm here and more nervous like in the in the patron is a little bit of a setting where it's a little bit more calm and it's only ten dollars to join per month and you get like one video like this that it really explains all the tips like this last video actually really. There was a lot of like really good information, in my opinion, again. <laughs> so I'm going to dry, make sure that this is really well dry. Because um, when you add the colors, it's really important to have any of the paste or gesso well, like dried really well on your background. Otherwise, it's going to get really mushy with the rest of the stuff. I have done some stuff where... I've applied wet stuff on wet gesso, but it's not something I highly recommend. You need to really know how to maneuver everything, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's important. So 
And because I added such a thick gesso, it's gonna take me a few more seconds to dry this than the usual because the thick gesso is in this area. I honestly really like the fact that I have these two side by side. It gives it such a really good perspective because you can see where I'm going and you can see also like how I'm getting to this point, which is really good. And um, a lot of people have been using this short, uh, short style journals. I also have a square one as well, which I really love. But what I like about, um, besides all the things that I said before, is just how doable it is. And that really helps to, to I don't know. I noticed also that a lot of people just doing the bottom or the top and mostly the bottom. And I somehow want to do the full spread. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Dawn, I would love to come back to Paper Lane Studios. Uh, please ask. Um, please ask Leanne. I would love to come. Uh, Karen, look underneath. I have it linked in the description. Uh, it's a really small size journal. It's a really good quality. The papers are 100 140 pounds, like they're really thick. They're 300 GSM or 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. Uh, it's the first link actually in the description. If it's from Amazon and it's really good. Amazon.com. So it's perfect for you. Sorry, just a little bit longer because I see here like a little bit of like soft gesso, even though it's so. This is another thing. Sometimes things are soft to the touch and uh, not soft to the touch. I meant to say dry to the touch. But you can see that there's still like a little bit wet underneath, so you have to be very careful. Um, anyway, so, okay, so now it's dry. And what I'm going to be using to do the coloring is some magicals. Now, you can definitely also use things like watercolors, like an orange watercolor would be perfect. Somehow, I love, because I love the color to be very bright and thick, I love using the magicals for this and otherwise I have to add so many layers and I run out of patience. So that's basically what happens. And these two colors, sorry, just to say they are red hot poker orange and Bay Bayou Boogie Gold. Oh my God. I, these names are hard for me to pronounce and it's funny. They're funny. They're good. Um, so I am going to use this. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to drip from top to bottom. Now, I can see that the composition is a little bit different than before. And that's okay. As you notice here, I went further out into the middle. And here I didn't. And that's okay because I can complement this after with stamping as well. So that works just as easy. Uh, oops. Sorry. I'm trying to like, oh, where did it go? So, um Sorry, I was trying to watch the chat. Um, uh, so now I'm going to do the water. So of course you need water. I almost forgot to fill this water myself. Let's fill the, this bottle with water. And also another thing that I like is because I have, um, sorry, one second. because I have this here in the middle, I'm going to avoid a lot of like seeping through from underneath, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to start adding this orange and having it drip down the page. And I really want it to kind of like really drip nicely. Well, if that is uh, because it's, so, it's it is hard to control drips, but you want it to kind of drip drip in a way that it will kind of seep through all the washi tape. So there we go. So that's what it does. And the nice thing about it, oh, you see it's getting stuck here. I need to lift it up. So if that happens, lift it up. And I'm trying to use the paintbrush to kind of guide it to where I want it to go. Because I don't want it to be everywhere. As you can see, sometimes you get these splatters over here. But because I have the gesso, it's super easy to just kind of remove. Just want to be careful because it's I think it's a little bit wet still yeah there it is it's still a little bit wet um, either way I can always cover this after so I made a mistake here and this is something that I always say even if you make mistakes you can actually um, 
fix it afterwards with some gesso. Now, magicals do not have a binder. There's kind of like they're dyes, but they're they're dye ink, but they also act like watercolors. They don't have a binder. You can spray them or you can add a little bit of distress microglaze and that kind of keeps them in place. So you're good in that way. Okay. See, I'm trying to not let it come down too much. I see I put too much of a thick gesso coat here and that's what it got ruined. And I will fix that with gesso so it's not a problem. I'm going to add um, hold on, I have to add a little bit of this other color or oh, the gold a little bit. Let's add a little bit of gold. Okay, there we go. And just um, hold on. Water is really your best friend when it's when you're using things like watercolors or magicals because they really tend to kind of give you that effect that that I mean that effect that I love, which is to have it kind of drip down the page. Now, beyond this, I love using black as well, and I have I don't have a black magical, or maybe I do, but it's not dark enough. So I'm using this one. It's also from Lindy's, but you could use like. I, the reason why I've pulled it out is because I couldn't find my black distress spray, but this works just as well. And it's a, it's called a flat Fabio because it's a flat color. It's not shimmery. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit with the spout and letting it drip down. And that formed that really cool, I don't know, painted dark wall, distress wall that I, that you see in the other page if that makes sense, okay? And um, I just wanted to say for the Magicals, if you wanna get them, the link below, I think it gives you 10 or 10% 10 or something like that to, to the, well, I think if you use my name, Karen Tamir, you get 10%, okay? Sorry, I think I might've forgotten to put that in. But if you're shopping directly from Lindy's, which is the link in the description, um, you can you can get like 10% off with my link here. It was just putting my name Karen Tamir. Okay. Anyways, uh, so now I'm just going to drip, 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 drip. And if you think you put too much black, that's okay. <laughs> um Uh, Michelle, all the list of items are below. If you want the specific names, I can definitely do that. But all the, the list of all the items are below, like the journal, the the, the washi, well, the washi tape, I, it's an old one. I can't have you find the washi tape. But the magicals um, are specifically, um, I'll tell you the two names. It was, this specific one is red, hot, poker, orange, but there's so many nice colors. You're not going to know what to choose. and the Bayou Boogie Gold. And this is a flat Fabio. It's a black. Oh, Tiffany. <laughs> so nice. Thank you, Tiffany. You're so cute. Okay. You didn't have to like do that. Okay. Now, if you think you have too much black, which I think I do right now, you could easily like use a little, a little bit of a wipe and just wipe this off. Okay. I'm just getting off. It's too liquidy. So that's why. So yeah, that's the Lindy's link. And if you use my name, Karen Tamir, as a coupon code, you should be able to, sometimes it's linked directly to my name, but sometimes it's not. But some of these, uh, this blue, by this Bayou one, uh, Bayou Boogie Gold comes on its own. It's a single one, I think, I can't remember. But these other ones sometimes come in sets and it's worth to get the sets because you get like a few colors at a time instead of singles. Um, one of my favorite sets is the Galactic Teal by my friend Nuneka. It's a one I use a lot. It has it has the Galactic Teal. It's called Galactic or something, Outer Space, Outer Space, Outer Space. It has some really nice colors. It has like yellow and teal and green. So it's one of my favorites and I use it a lot, even though today I'm going with oranges. Okay, so there we go. Oh, that's good. I really like how this is turning out. And now you have to draw. Like this is so important, dry, dry, dry. The more you dry, the more you're going to be happy with the results. Because if let's say you didn't put enough, um, let's say paint, or you wanna add a little bit more orange, my journal is already saturated with color. So 
I need to be able to dry this so I can go to the next level. Oh, they're having a big sale now. You hear Karen Opet says that uh, that uh, Lindy's is having a big sale, so it's worth it. These last forever. I had the same pots for a year. Like, I mean, I've had this one, I think I want to say three or four years, okay? And look how much I have. You only need a little bit. I literally use so little. These each magical and last forever. I mean, watercolors do too. And that's basically um, why I like them. And I can see here there's a bunch of gold, which I really like. And you can reactivate anything you want. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I really like this, what's forming here. That's really good. Yeah, the sprays last forever. Everything lasts forever. And the sprays, what's nice about the sprays is that they come in powders and you have to refill them with the water. So they're not heavy to ship, which is really great. And everything comes from the US. They're a home, um, they're like, how do you call this? Like home base? No, what's that? They're, right? they're uh, not home base. What am I trying to say? They are their own personal company. Like they're a small company. They just do everything on their own at home and so forth. That's what I meant to say. I don't think I need to add anything else, but you could go back, as I said, and add more if you wanted to. Now, I want to fix this as well with the with the, uh, gesso, which I'm going to do right now. Although... Um, Sometimes, and sorry, I was going to say I need a paintbrush. And I like to add, to grab like kind of like an old paintbrush for this, or you can use your finger, which I tend not to try to use as much. And it's here. So let's start from the bottom here. You see how like here there's a line, like a line that I don't like. So you can use kind of like a paintbrush to pounce it and create like to kind of hide that line. Now, um, I will be hiding that as well with some stamping, but what I really want to hide is this, okay? So I got a lot of this color that kind of seeped over here, okay? And I'm just trying to remove as much as possible, but I don't want it to look like that. I want it to kind of be white as white as possible okay because what happens is that even this will kind of react with uh, like because it's water-based the gesso is water-based it will react and that's okay if it's lighter and then the color that that i have but i don't want it to be like orange right because i really like that white space so there we go you see how i was able to fix it really easily and then I'm going to dry everything really well again. <laughs> so the key to mixed media or to any wet projects is drying. Drying is the key. It's one of the most important things. I mean, I think it's obvious for us that we need to dry, but it really makes a difference when we dry and, and kind of... Uh, because everything looks better when things are dry and doesn't look like mushy, if that makes sense. So I don't like it to kind of mush up all together. So yeah, oh, there you go, 25% off. Yeah, you guys should take advantage. I paid full price for everything. I don't get sent these things, I pay everything myself. But I would love for you to hold, press my link only because, like, first I get like a commit, I guess a, a very small commission for if you guys buy anything, but you also get 25%. And I, I, I don't know, I, I'm assuming that 10% on top of it might be also. So uh, you might as well shop. I, I don't know. Let's try and see if it will work. Um, um, try to see if it will work, uh, like, with the 10% on top of it, okay? Now, stamping is my best friend as well. I have a lot of best friends in mixed media. Okay, I love collecting stamps, things like script stamps, like this newspaper stamp. I love this one from Tim Hold. It's called Fades. I don't know. I think I posted a few underneath, but uh, yeah. And I love using, if because I used a lot of black, I usually go for the black archival ink. So 
And I just really love the the way that it's um, how do you call it? the way it like kind of looks when you do this. And I can't remember what I use, but you don't always have to use the same stuff. So I try to use hold my stamps like really at the edge. Oops, no, that didn't work. Hold on. It had oh made a mistake again. So this is where like I want to always for you always to like kind of know that even making mistakes, it's okay. Like, you know, you're going to be stamping and you're going to be getting these like, you know, I just stamped myself all the way up there, but you can cover that up. It's not a problem. Okay. You can definitely cover that up with gesso. So don't worry. <laughs> um, so that's what I like saying, because I like only getting like this, that distress look to kind of get it um, in certain areas to, to kind of have everything flow. Let's use a little bit of the script stamp now. And I will fix the rest of it's upside down. Uh, yeah. And I will fix that as well. Um, hold on. No, just my full name, Karen Tamir, would be the code. Let me know if it works if you're shopping now. Um, Okay, so that is, um... no, no, it's definitely, I think, my first and last name, Karen Tamir. I think all one word in capitals. I think it's in capitals, but I don't know. Don't quote me if it's capitals or not capitals. You know what? I need to add it to the thing. Oh, it did work. Okay, good. <laughs> I think, right? Um... Okay, so as you can see, I added some stamping. I even like to add some of this one. I think I added more stamping than what I did in the other one, but that's okay. So I just, sometimes I just like adding, just like adding like little bits and pieces. It really helps to kind of make everything flow together. This one came out a lot darker, but I haven't added everything yet. I'm still going to be adding some foundry waxes. So you're going to see like the difference with the gold coming out. Okay. And I will fix this part soon with the gesso because I just need to cover that up. But before I do that, um, I am going, oh no, actually I can do that and then do something else as well at the same time. So Truly, gesso becomes our best friend. And you can see all the little pieces coming through, like all the pieces of the washi tape coming through, which is really great. Now, I have tend to use my finger sometimes for things, just to pounce. If you don't feel like using your finger, feel free to use, feel free to use like a paintbrush, okay? So that's, um, there we go. And you cover it up and as if none the wiser, right? Is that the right expression? None the wiser. Okay, there we go. So now we're back to square one. And we are good to go with the next little bit. And that is that um, that is that I want to add a little bit of the foundry waxes. And what I did with the foundry wax, I'm going to use the gilded one, which you should shake really, really well. And have some alcohol beside it, as beside you as well. Of course, I'll just do it here on this mat. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is first get a paintbrush ready. So I want to have everything ready because the foundry waxes dry really, really, really quickly. <laughs> so you want to make sure. The good thing is my friend Tiffany showed me that you can reactivate them with alcohol. So, which is great before they dry up. Okay. So that's a little bit of alcohol. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to splatter. And I got splattered too much in that corner. Okay. I'm going to splatter around here. And I'm also going to, oh, I think it's too liquidy, but it should be okay. I can always do it again. I'm also going to add a little bit of gold only at the edges here. So it would be like the edge here and the edge over here. 
because I like doing that. And then what you need is you need um, a really strong uh, heat gun, like the embossing gun kind of. And this one makes a lot of noise, I'm sorry. But what it does is that it melts everything really well and it creates a really nice golden effect. Oh, well, Marita, you only have 50 to 70 rolls. Okay, you definitely have more than me, but that's funny. Yeah, we can really use the, uh, we can really use washi tape. We kind of forget. I think that's the thing. We kind of forget to use washi tape, right? So <laughs> I want to add a little bit more because I wanted to have a little bit more like that gold effect, golden effect. And if I forgot to kind of splatter it anywhere, then that's what it's going to do. So, yeah, and notice I'm not adding any of the gold part on the, on the white space. I'm always limited to this area, okay? I'm always limiting myself to this area. And what I did as well, as you can see here, is that I did these like, like little dots. I don't know what made me possess to do these dots. Because there's a script, uh, not a script, a stitch stamp that is going to go across there. I think I might have done this afterwards, but just, and I think I'm not being sent, I'm not even centering them. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm going to add this. Um... Now that I add the second layer, look how much darker it is. It's just so nice. I love gold. It's my best friend. Now I have lots of best friends. Okay, so that is, I really like how that's looking. And what I did is I grabbed, oops, not this. I grab a stitch stamp. This is the Tim Holtz stitches. And what I wanted to do is kind of have this stitch line going all the way across so I could put my butterflies. Now in this one, I can see that the stitch stamp, like it's kind of above some of the design, but because I don't have that here, I'm trying to, I might just start a little bit above here and all the way down. And I do not want this little bow thing, no, at least not here. So or maybe I could have it at the top. No, I don't know if I want it. So I will just stamp and hold it up. So I will just hunt, we'll, we'll stamp just the other, the stitches and not. So this is great because obviously it's very hard to stitch inside a journal. So this helps to do that. So the foundry wax, I don't know what it's made out of, but it kind of dries like embossing, like embossing powder. Okay, that's what I always can when you know if when you heat set it, it kind of becomes this really shiny. You see, like the shininess of it, it becomes this shiny product. I've never seen a product do this before, where. Um, it becomes shiny like that. I mean, some sprays, some inks can do that, but it's hard to get that effect, okay? So um, I really like that it's permanent. Oh, and it's also permanent. So I really like that it does that. Another, if you don't want the foundry wax and you want the gold stuff, okay? Um, I use this often as well. This is a calligraphy, it's a ink, okay? It's not, I don't use it for calligraphy. I use it to use for splatters and to do colors. And I just want to show you, like it looks like this, right? So you can just like do drips as well. So for example, you know, it will do like the same amount of drips and it will stay that way. The nice thing about either the foundry wax or this is that it doesn't mix with the watercolors because it's not water-based, it's ink-based. And um, 
And this one is more, I think, more alcohol based in the sense that it kind of uh, mixes with that. So um, mixes with alcohol, I mean to say. So because it's not water based, it really helps me whenever I'm using things like Lindy's Magicals or watercolors and things like that. Now, I'm going to put the butterflies and I'm just basically gluing them. One, two, and three. And I'm going to use some gel medium. Oh, the faded type is sold out everywhere. Oh, that's why I, I, I think I added it to the list. I might have, I don't know, I can't remember. Is it sold out in the, where I did it as well? Where I, um, yeah, I think we'll, um, I don't know, check because I'm not sure if it is Rebecca. Um, but the stitch stamp I know is available because I was looking at it yesterday to put it on my on the list below my video. I thought I put the faded one, but that could be for another. I can't remember. You know, I do so many of these videos, so I can never remember. Um, I think like a lot of us do have a lot of these rolls lying around, and we just don't realize that we could use them for so many different things. And if you if you love doing things like mixed media. You know, the annual life doing, let's say, like just regular cards or mixed media cards, they can be used even for card making or for like, you know, creating layers in a canvas. Like basically anything goes. It really is like something you can do. You know, it's I don't know. I just find that it's 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 it just helps a lot to to just use our stash, if that makes sense. You know, OK. I like lining them up like this also because it gives, kind of give me, gives me the impression that is that it's kind of like, and you know, like the butterflies that are in like the museums or like in those boxed cases, like it's kind of gives me that impression. Sorry, I think I'm crooked again. And look how different, even though I did the exact same thing in both, look how different it looks. I just love that. Um, okay, now also I want to do a sentiment here. Well, I like this, you do you. I like that. Actually, I really like this. Okay, so I am going to, maybe I'll put it this time right here because I think it fits well. Okay, hold on. Oh, thank you so much, Elaine. Okay, it was crooked. <laughs> and I'm going to grab my Stabilo pencil and just add a little bit of it here. So the Stabilo pencil is like, it's it writes on everything. It's called Stabilo All and it writes on basically anything. And why I like this is because you can really create cool markings on your mixed media stuff. And I just realized I don't think I linked the Stabilo but I will link it afterwards, okay? The Stabilo pencil, I just realized, for those of you who are not familiar with this, because a lot of you know that I use this a lot, but for those of you who are not familiar with it, I will link it soon. I just forgot to do that. Um, and what I am is I'm just using it to highlight around it. Now, this is this Stabilo pencil is also like water-based in the sense that it reacts with water. Now, I wanna show you why that is important, okay? Let me just first, outline. So what I'm doing is outlining everything. The substrate is a small journal, three and a half by five, but the pages themselves are 300 GSM or 140 pound watercolor, which are really thick. So they're great for, for mixed media. So just in case I mentioned it before, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows. And I'm going to outline here. So now why I like about the Stabilo pencil is that I can grab water. Okay, so it looks really nice as it is just highlighted this way. However, if you add a little bit of water, just a little bit of a spray, it's going to spread a little bit because it reacts with water. And what you're able to do is just create that shadow around the butterflies without having to do much of anything, like not a lot of effort. And it just creates that really cute shadow, cool shadow. So I think I even added a few white splatters here. I just realized, and I can do that as well. So I will add it. I just realized I also did not add these ones as well. So 
I like, I, as I said, I like this Bombay inks. I'm using the white one this time. I like them a lot because they don't react with the water. So I can, I'm able to use them for splatters. Just looking for a paintbrush that will help me create the splatters. Hold on. Oh, there. So I just like create splatters this way and they just kind of stay. So I use this. I know some people use um, the Dina Wakely gloss sprays. I just always forget to clean them and then they clog. And I just rather this one never clogs. So I just like using this. So uh, what is the base of the art you're, you're doing? Uh, the base was like, like I said, the journal that is 140 pounds. You can watch at the beginning, I explain it all, but I used the washi tape to create the design, okay? So that's what I did. So here it is. I am so happy you were able to join me today. I hope you like what I created. And it's truly amazing how what you can do with stash, with things that you have in your stash. So if you want to see what other things you can create, even with the foundry waxes, I have this video right here on my channel, right here linked above, that you could see how I created this. This was another live stream, and I think you're going to enjoy it as well, because it really gives you a basis of the foundry waxes.